the property, the subject property. This is the neighboring property to the east. Um, and there's other properties with about 4,000 square feet and, and down from there on different size lots. And then this is, this is just an aerial view of the property itself in question. And looking from the, the north over top, this is the, the petitioner's house the white house there this is the adjacent property to the east that's their the 5,000 square foot building um, and then just zoomed out view from the road and Kiwanis and then this is looking from the southwest and that should take you through <coughs> till the end um, thank you and if there's any questions I'd be glad to answer them any questions on the county side David, I just got to, did they kind of remedy the, there was last time with that power line pole that ran through the property, did they come up with a solution on that or, or would it be moved or not? I think the applicant can answer that, but it, I think it indicated in the letter that that would be, if it needed to be moved, that's an option. Okay. Yeah. Can we have the applicant come forward? Ron Cheddar, I represent Ellen Judy Schmidt, 5800 North Kiwanis. The question about the power line, um, obviously it does have to be moved and they are willing as per the letter. Did everybody receive a letter? So did, did, did they receive a letter? Hmm. They get the letter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically they're, they're willing to, at their expense, move the line so it doesn't impose in any way. I did meet with the property owner as per the letter and we came up with those conditions. He's okay with it. Uh, he has seen the letter. He's obviously not here, it seems like. Um, I would assume if he objects any further, he'd be here. <coughs> but all Ellen Judy Schmidt would like me to, to mention there are two older people that are merging two households. Um, obviously, they're successful people, so there's a lot of logistics that go in trying to merge these two households and a lot of stuff, as you know. <laughs> um, so they need the space and would respectfully ask that you approve it. They are um, imposing on themselves considerable additional expense by moving this property back out of the way so the drainage issues are addressed for the adjoining property owner, mitigating a culvert across the road on the front. Um, the drainage slopes off considerably to the north and east, which is going to impose considerable dirt work expense. Uh, so they're doing everything they can as far as they're concerned to mitigate and ease any inconveniences to the adjoining property owner. And he was okay when we met with where we're placing this. It means we're moving it back and 15 feet off his property. We have no objections to the restrictions placed in the letter. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Citizen. Quick question, Mr. Chatter. This is, uh, this building is going to be constructed on, looks like the northeast corner of this property? Yes. Okay. We will basically hug the property line to the north and 15 feet off, which is an additional 12 feet from what's required to make room for drainage so there's no imposing on the neighbor's property. Very good, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? With that, I guess I'll close the floor and any further discussion? Uh, I guess if the neighbor and the petitioner come to agreement on it, I, I would like to make a motion to approve it. I would second that. I guess all in favor? Hi. Right. All opposed? Okay. How many need to say you voted? I voted aye. <laughs> <laughs> City commissioners? I'll make a motion to approve the conditional use permit. Second. With, sorry, with the six stipulations that the county had stated. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none. Um, all those in favor? Say yes. 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 All those opposed? No? Okay. Oh, the motion is carried. Carried. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. Nope. That uh, 
see no old business. Okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Uh, oh. Okay, my, my apologies. Even if there's none. All right, new business, there is none. And I guess with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. In favor? Aye. 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 Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 All those opposed? Okay. We're adjourned. Okay. Sorry to confuse you on the I and the yes. call to order this regular meeting of the Minnehaha County Planning Commission and we'll begin with a few introductory comments. As a courtesy again to everyone here tonight, please make sure that your cell phones are turned off. Please note tonight's Planning Commission meeting will be rebroadcast re via city link and posted on www.minnehahacounty.org for viewing by the general public. Any final action taken on the conditional use permit application <coughs> tonight will take effect five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal to the Planning Commission's decision is filed in the Planning Office by Monday, April 1st at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on Tuesday, April 16th at or after 9 a.m. The affected parties will be notified of the meeting date. Meetings of the County Commission are held in this same room. Action taken on the rezoning application near the public hearing tonight are a recommendation that will be forwarded to the County Commission for another public hearing on Tuesday, April 23rd at or after 9 a.m. Meetings of the County Commission are held in this same room and the decision of the County Commission will be final. First on the agenda is public input. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to an item that is not on the agenda? Seeing none. At this point, <clears throat> the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are perceived to be non-controversial and meet all of the requirements of the codes and regulations. The consent agenda will be acted on in one motion with no public hearing on the item unless a member of the public, the commission, or staff requests the item to be removed from the consent agenda. The, <clears throat> the minutes from the February 25th meeting are included in the consent agenda. Does any planning commission member wish to have an item removed for discussion? Okay. Next, I'll read each item on the consent agenda and ask if there is any issues or comments from the staff or audience. If any member of the staff or audience would like to have, would like to be heard on the item, please raise your hand and the item will remove to the regular agenda to allow you to address the commission later in the meeting. Any items remaining on the consent agenda will be approved by the planning commission with the conditions recommended by staff. Item one on the consent agenda is the approval of, of the minutes, February 25th, 2019. Item two is conditional use, 
conditional use permit 19-13 to allow a Class B hog CAFO on the property legally described as Southwest Quarter, Southwest Quarter <coughs> of such as Totoro's addition, Southeast Quarter, Southwest Quarter, Section 13, Track 10, Township. thank you, Township, excuse me, 104 North Range 48 West. Um, the petitioner is Chad, the property owner is Terry. Stottero. Yep. All right. Um, item three, rezoning 1904 to rezone from agricultural A1 district to the C commercial district, properly legally described as portions of Egan's tract 1B, except the north eight feet, north one half, southwest quarter section 27, township 103 north, range 49 west. Uh, petitioner is Mark Crisp. Or is the same? Did you want to have that one? Oh. I saw you raise your hand. Did you want it that one? Oh, okay. Um, 2547 to 475th Avenue, located approximately five miles south of Baltic. Conditional use item four is conditional use permit 1914 to allow a motor vehicle repair shop on the <coughs> excuse me property, legally described as lot four, block four. Brower edition, Southwest Quarter, Section 27, Township 101 North, Range 5, 51 West. Um, Joshua Dean Hammond is petitioner. The owner is Dean Stockwell, 26062 Ashley Street, located about a half a mile south of Hartford. Item 5, conditional use permit 19 16, to a small dog breeding kennel on the property legal described as Northwest Quarter, Northwest Quarter, Northwest Quarter, Section 23, Township 101 North, Range 48 West. Uh, Steve Kleinman is the petitioner. That's 4209, 4209, 265th Street, located approximately three miles east of Sioux Falls. That would conclude the, uh, the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The, then the chair will vote aye. All right. Well, now, now move on to the regular agenda. Uh, rezoning 1901 to rezone <coughs> from the I-1 Light Industrial District to the R1 residential district on the property legally described as lots one through six, blocks five, Rowena Original, section 26, township 101 North, range 48 West. The petitioner is Deb Larson. The owner is the same. It's 48272 South Dakota State Highway 42, located approximately four miles east of Sioux Falls. Good evening, Planning Commission. David Heinold, County Planning Department. Um, as you mentioned, rezoning 19-01 is a, it's a deferral from last month's Planning Commission meeting, February 25th. Um, this is to rezone from the I-1 Light Industrial District to the R-1 Residential District. This property is located right in uh, the unincorporated area of Rowena. Um, the property is outlined in red. It encompasses about 1.53 acres in total. Um, as you can see, it's just north of South Dakota State Highway 42 and um, east of Douglas Avenue, where the two intersect. Um, the, um, this is an update. The, the petitioner met with county planning staff um, to discuss the rezoning application and what um, the last planning commission meeting um, and some of the suggestions that were provided as far as um, splitting some of the lots and keeping light industrial. Um, the um, applicant has provided a, a letter, a two-page letter that has been given to the planning commission members um, that explains the what happened with that meeting um, in terms of what their request is. They're requesting for the rezoning. Um, the um, and again, uh, when that letter was dropped off, the the discussion focused on helping to mitigate the effect of the proposed rezoning on adjacent landowners um, 
And just for clarification, I have provided details about the, the buffer yards in the Red Rock Corridor overlay zoning district um, because this property is within the, it's a half mile area centered around South Dakota Highway 42 um, that sets additional uh, development regulations on properties. Um, so that is there for information. The, um, the property, the subject property is currently being used as a residential single family dwelling. So if any commercial <clears throat> properties that were adjacent to that, they would have to meet the same um, minimum 30 foot wide buffer yard of trees evenly spaced um, <clears throat> from that residential property that this property sits on. Um, so that's just for information. The, so staff finds that the proposed rezoning for, from the I-1 Light Industrial District to the R-1 Residential District is consistent with the goals and policies of the Envision 2035 Comprehensive Plan and recommends approval of rezoning 19-01. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, and I could also go through the pictures again. But David, we, I just have one question. I was, it's all right. Yeah, go ahead. What's all res residentials all on the south side there? Is that right? So, that yes, right? that's correct. The residential is on the south side. There is a small sliver of... So there is a small sliver of commercial property that's on this property right there on the corner but everything else to the south is residential and then the adjacent property to the east is also residential it's the same r1 residential zoning district and then this is commercial where that building sits and then this is the neighboring property to the west that was discussions from last month's meeting this is commercial mm -hmm. um, the rest is pretty much this is all commercial right here and there's some residential properties in there and then this is actually zoned light industrial, I-1 light industrial. So what the current property is zoned right now. Can you use that road as a buffer or not? Would that cons be considered a buffer or not? The road? Um, there, that street right there. Or not, Douglas, yeah, Douglas right there. Avenue? Yeah. Um, the ordinance does not spell out, does not specify either using a, it doesn't specify whether it's inclusive or not, a, or exclusive of the right-of-ways. Um, so it's just adjacent properties, so that wouldn't, it, won't they, really it would still then. have to provide the 30 foot. Right. Thank you, David. Can you have the petitioner come forward and state your name and address for the record? Deb Larson, 48276 SD, Highway 42, Brandon, South Dakota. Yes, uh, thank you for coming back. Is there anything that you would like to say or uh, any um, points of contention you had with the letter that was drafted since the, our last meeting? Nothing further, just that the house is was sold as a residential home there is no business there so right. it, yeah it just didn't make sense keep it that way any questions for the petitioner thank you very much okay anyone else like to speak to this matter all right seeing so, you know, i guess with that I'll, I'll close the floor and ask for any discussion You know, growing up for me in that area my whole life, the house has been there for a long time now. Um, like she said last time, she was in the process of uh, refurbishing it to make it look like it was when it was originally put up. And at that time, it was a very nice looking home. So I, uh, I'm going to vote for this. All right. Any other discussion? Do I have a motion to approve? Or? I'll have, make a motion to approve item number six. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Aye. All opposed? 
chair will vote aye for uh, approval. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> item seven is the conditional use permit 19-15 to amend CUP 6-20 to amend condition one to allow 8,000 animal units on the property legal, legally described as lot one, Woody County Dairy Subdivision, government's lots one and two, southeast quarter, section 10, township 104, north, range 47 west, the petitioner's Lynn Boldwine, uh, the location is 48772 246th Street, located about approximately four miles north of Sherman. Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, as you just stated, th this property is approximately four miles uh, north of Sherman along Township Road 246th Street. Uh, the property currently has a Class A dairy that holds 5,999 head or animal units and uh, the request is to amend the conditional use permit uh, to a Class A da CAFO dairy uh, for 8,000 animal units. Uh, the original permit was received in 2006 and the construction of the the property began in 2007. Uh, the site plan uh, largely holds um, the original buildings on it because a lot of the property is currently built out. And, oops, got in the wrong order. <laughs> okay, so there's the, the site plan. You'll see that there's kind of a, an empty box in the top part of the plan where that's where the, the new barn would be going. Uh, site plan elements are discussed in the staff report. Uh, all the site plan elements uh, are satisfactory to staff uh, in what's there available. Uh, other elements of the, the request and the requirements for a conditional use permit is setback requirements. And since the, the original permit, the setback requirements for this new operation has, are the expanded operation has ex changed a little bit. For the 8,000 animal unit operation, the ordinance requires a 3,960 foot buffer from any dwelling, church, or business. Uh, the petitioner has received waivers from uh, two of the houses that are closer than 3,960 feet, and the petitioner owns the third house, so he does not need a buffer for the third house. Um, the setback requirements for the ordinance uh, for any municipality is also met as the closest municipality is Jasper, Minnesota, which is 2.3 miles to the northeast of the site. Uh, as part of the conditional use permit criteria in the staff report, you'll note that there are conditional use permit criteria that is included in the staff report. Uh, the request generally meets the permit criteria and the staff finds that the uh, permit application is satisfactory to meet the, the criteria. But the reason why this has been uh, brought to the regular agenda by staff is for a couple of items. Uh, the first item is that the existing lagoons on the property uh, are encroaching on the 100 foot setback from an intermittent stream on the property. And let's see if I can find the right map for it. All right, so on this map here, you'll see there's a little blue line that runs diagonally through the northeast corner of the property. And on either side of that blue dotted line is a lagoon. And uh, that is uh, inter classified as an intermittent stream on, as the, by the USGS. Um, and the, uh, the ordinance requires a 100 set foot setback from that stream. Uh, these ponds, these lagoons, were constructed. Uh, some, the first set of lagoons on the south uh, were constructed with the original permit, and then the north one uh, was constructed in approximately 2011 into 2012. Um, the lagoons are not, uh, do not require a building permit, uh, so it wasn't necessarily that staff was looking for uh, where these lagoons were going at the time. Uh, and I would also note that uh, staff is certain that the lagoons were built under a uh, state uh, permit that requires um, uh, 
manure management permitting and engineering for such uh, livestock manure waste facilities. Uh, but with the uh, setback not being met, uh, staff reaches that there are a few different options that the Planning Commission can take. Uh, and one is acknowledge that this is there, uh, but that the intent of the ordinance is being met uh, as that the intent of the ordinance is not to allow runoff into these intermittent streams with the engineering uh, it would allow the lagoons not to run off into these and add additional nutrients into the intermittent stream uh, or they can the commission can require the petitioner to obtain a variance uh, to require the setback reduction or the commission can require corrective action uh, and delay the the permit uh, to in order to comply with the permit for expansion. Um, the uh, other issue that uh, staff was going to bring up uh, is a little bit more of a house cleaning uh, thing uh, in conditional use permit. A lot of the the 620, the original permit that allowed the dairy to uh, be constructed. Uh, a lot of the conditions were set up d due to the phased approach of how this dairy was to be uh, built. Uh, and staff is requesting a change in condition number three uh, to re reflect that the ch uh, the executive summaries for nutrient management plans regarding phases to just be addressed as copies of the full nutrient management plan shall be kept and shall be provided to the county upon request. So that way we have them available if we need them. Uh, otherwise, uh, we don't have to worry about the phase uh, approach for the conditions. Uh, with that being sense, said, staff does recommend conditional use permit number 1915 to amend conditional use permit 0620 with the following, with the revised conditions. And the revised conditions would be condition number one, the maximum size of the facility shall be limited to 8,000 animal units. And number three, that copies of the full nutrient management plan shall be provided to the county upon request. And I'll just go through a few photos as well. So uh, our pictometry for the co county has uh, goes back several years where you can see these aerial imagery. Uh, the image on the left in this slide is the image of the facility being built or just newly built in 2007. And then the image on the right is 2017, which is more or less where it is today. Um, so you can see some of those changes in how um, uh, the facility has expanded. Uh, again, there's a site plan, and, and really the major change is the addition to the barn on the north side, uh, but the lagoons are uh, built with the size enough to uh, maintain the new expansion. There's a site, the creek that I wanted to show, and then here's some photos of the site. So um, on the site, there's the uh, um, silage pile on the site. It really almost covers up the view of almost everything else. And you'll see the row of trees uh, that is starting to grow um, on the outside of the property. And there are the barns. And then this is looking away from the uh, property to the south, to the closest residence where the tree belt is there. And then this is <coughs> looking to the west, kind of up the where the creek kind of flows through. And you'll see the, the lagoons, mounds on either side of the, where the snow drifts kind of are is there too. Um, and then this is looking away to the, net, the other farmsteads in the area. And then finally from the north across the section. Um, so is there any questions? Bring it back to site plan. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Kevin. Yep. We have the petitioner come forward and state your name and address for the record. Lynn Bodewine, 46945, 251st Street, Baltic, South Dakota. Any questions for Lynn? 
I just got a quick question, Lynn. How, how often does water run in the intermittent stream? Um, you know, so, you know, so I, 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 I'll let me go through the explanation. It's very, it's pretty limited. I took a picture of it. We took a picture of it a couple hours ago and there isn't water running through it. Um, I, I don't know whether it was an oversight. I'm thinking back, you know, we probably started planning that cell in 2010. 10 and 11 and then we built it over the over you know fall into one and, and then into the next um, you know I, I know that um, I met with um, I went down and met with NRCS and we talked about it you know what's the right location for a waste cell um, and then you know uh, I had you know my engineer um, we went through, you know, where to put it, how to do it. And I guess the thing that I'd say, and I, I guess I wasn't, you know, the intermittent stream thing, and I guess I, I mean, I apologize if we didn't. I mean, we sure have talked to NRCS and all that, and we made the decision at the time, you know, it's a pretty low water flow. There's like less than 50 acres above it that drain um, through that area. Um, when we put the, the mic. oh sorry when we put the um, system in the waterway through there I mean we calculated the the pipe size and what I did in there um, where you have going through I put uh, you know they only needed an 18 inch culvert for that water flow so we put in 224s um, at the time you know my engineer wrote a letter you know putting together what we had, uh, you know, what his calculations were on it. And if you see up on the north and east, uh, one of the parts of, it, of a stream like this is you don't want the stream, if say those culverts plugged, you want to make sure that you don't have any water from the stream, you know, going into the lagoon. Um, that wouldn't happen. Our relief is to the north and east. So if any of those culverts were to ever plug, it would go around the north and the east berm before it would ever, I think it was like two and a half feet that would have to go up before it would ever overtop the lagoon system. Um, I know if any of you, I mean, I mean, there was quite a bit of discussion when we did it, but you know, changing any type of water course is always a difficult issue. So it was decided at that time with our engineers to do it this way. So I apologize. I don't think there was any um, attempt. My engineer, the first thing when I said to him, this is, you know, he didn't think it was an intermittent stream, but I'm not going to argue. Um, but it's not like these streams that you see, you know, like just about every stream in Mayana County is flowing today. So, but this one isn't. So, all right. Um, Thank you. Any other questions for Lynn? All right, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to this item? Please state your name and address. Doug Fleer, 401 Jackson Street, Valley Springs. I really don't think this needs to be any bigger than it is. Uh, there's already enough runoff up there. Uh, when this was first proposed, there were supposed to be restrictions on on smell, uh, incorporating manure, and everything else. Uh, I drove by it yesterday, and it's it's nasty. Um, as far as incorporating the manure and stuff, uh, I hope uh, uh, we have ground just west of there. Last fall, uh, we in, how should I say it? Uh, we came upon them where they had just trespassed across ground. They had hoses running across and stuff. Uh, there was never any permission. Had a pump out in the middle of, of the ground. Uh, I've seen where they've put manure on and it literally runs off, was running through a waterway last fall. Uh, we were farming the ground next to it and we had to drive through the waterway with the manure in it. Uh, there's a shared driveway to get out that was covered 
Uh, there's just as much on top as there is in the ground. Um, I just think there's enough stuff up there right now that it doesn't need to be any bigger than it is. I guess that's about all I got right now. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else wish to speak to this item? Well, oh, the petitioner come back up just to maybe address any concerns. Well, I, so I'm not sure the exact location where the manure or the trespassing pump is, or I guess on the map, you know, on the map, I mean, where is the, the government location? So, you know, I'm not sure specifically. I haven't had any, um, you know, haven't in that time any DNR. I guess I, guess I know manure application equipment. Um, you know, I, get, I, I think the best of the technology today is it lifts and turns in, in corners. We do some of the manure applications ourselves internally, and we hire um, an outside applicator as well. But we are ultimately responsible um, for all the manure application. You know, I mean, I mean the the site. I mean, we are uh, the owner, and I have the manager of the facility here with me as well. So. I'm not certain of what incident or, or the trespassing of the pump, generally whether the applicator, I, I don't think we've had any complaints from landowners where the pump is often, you know, um, this site is probably in the least populated area of Minneapolis County. There's not a lot of places around here but I mean I don't think I don't think we've had any we haven't had a, a lot of complaints at all with how it's been operated and, and I think that's you know, there's not a lot I mean this went out and there's not a lot of people here either so okay any other questions for Lynn thanks Lynn you said I uh, see no other interest to speak I'll close the floor and ask for discussion You know, me personally, as far as, as long as the uh, copies are being, uh, the nutrient plant, nutrient management plan is going to be presented so the county has it on file, that is, what else can you do? Um, property owners, if there was a problem, why didn't they uh, contact someone? Uh, so, you know, Ms. Mr. Fleer, you said, was it your property that, uh, the trespassing took place on that you're presenting? Yeah. So, so why didn't you contact someone right away or let the bovines know that they weren't on? Yeah. You did? She called the, the renter and the renter got a hold of somebody and uh, she stayed there while it was happening and uh, we think uh, a couple of pickups showed up pretty quick. Uh, and uh, they discussed 
invested, I guess, and the person that rents our grounds uh, came and told my mother that we talked to him about it, and uh, they presented her with a check to sort of compensate for the trespass. Yeah, I think we, we're closed at this point. Any thoughts, Adam or Doug? Well, I think, uh, you know, this, this is large. And, you know, we just always have to have open communications. Um, that's always the best remedy, it seems like. Rather than going down from person to person to person, you probably should have just got on the phone and called Lynn directly. Um, that way he knows about it right away. It isn't from person to person. It would solve a lot of problems, I believe. Um, I've known Lynn for quite a long time, 50 <laughs> years probably. And I know he would not do anything to you know, detriment your property or to cause problems for you. So. All right. Uh, I guess with that, I'll ask for a motion to approve for tonight. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, what item is this? Seven. Seven. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Chair will vote aye for approval. So, is that for a uh, point of clarification? What would you like to do about the intermittent stream and not meeting the setback? Just acknowledge that it's there. Uh, I just, when, when staff came upon this, it's sort of incumbent on us to not look the other way. I mean, I don't want to have someone come back to us and say in five years, well, you, 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 you knew about something and didn't do anything. So I think Kevin uh, <clears throat> laid out your options. You acknowledge it. He either gets a variance or you do some kind of mitigation and they change the stream or remove a whole a lagoon. I mean, there's enforcement action. There's really three options there. So this question on, on my part for clarification too, mm -hmm. can we approve the uh, conditional use permit but also have the, the stipulation that um, there has to be some remedy or whatever the, the board wants to decide? Are, are they two separate issues or is it you, you, a single I think approval? you can do them as two separate issues. You approve the conditional use permit. I, I just would feel a little bit more comfortable if you would at least give some kind of direction on, on what you would like staff to do or not do about the, the two existing lagoons that are too close to the intermittent waterway. Do I need this, I'm sorry, a little green here. Do I need just for uh, making sure we don't violate anything? Do I need to open for discussion to the audience, or can this be an internal discussion here? Well, I think that the testimony, or excuse me, the public comment uh, on proponents and opponents is already close to that. You've already made your motion. Okay. In order for you to go back and reconsider that as part of the motion, you'd have to have you'd have to have the person who made the motion and the person who made the second agree to revisit the granting uh, of the conditional use at this point. So I think that uh, what you uh, should do, Mr. Chairman, is um, just solicit any comments uh, without exposing your wishes, uh, just solicit any discussion about the options as Mr. Anderson has presented uh, to the, the commission uh, as far as those three options. Thank you. All right, I guess with that, <coughs> I would just like for discussion and uh, uh, maybe a, a motion on, on this side of how you'd like to address the intermittent stream. Can I just ask Kevin a question? Do you measure how far the distance, what it was, I guess? For those streams in between the pond, between those ponds and the stream, then. Um, yes, or at least with the the aerial view that you see here, our GIS does have a measurement tool. Um, the ponds are approximately, at least from water to water, 
are approximately 200 feet apart. Um, so I suppose the intermittent stream, when you take into account like the rise of the the, the levees or whatever the containment, uh, and then where it fl goes down, well, maybe about 70 to 50 feet, I suppose, to the either structure. So roughly 70 feet, yeah. you would think. So we can make a variance on you. Well, you have to apply for that. You have right. to oh. apply for variance. Right. Or you acknowledge, and you just move on and say, well, oh, okay. the site was made, and so be you move on. <coughs> I guess my opinion, you got a state looking at it, you got a, uh, engineers looking at it. To me, I guess they're the ones, I mean, they're the ones who should protect that pond from, to make that pond strong enough, I guess, you know, is what I'm getting at anyway. Does that make sense or not? Yeah, I agree. I would agree with Adam. I mean, just make something in that we're aware of it and yeah. keep it simple. Yeah, I'll make a motion to acknowledge that it's there and improve that. And I'll second it. I guess all in favor for uh, having a motion to acknowledge the intermittent stream and let it remain as is. Say aye. 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 All opposed? Or do I need to vote on this one too? I guess my recommendation would have been for a variance, but. For uh, to ask for a variance, so I did that. All right, Thank you. Um, item eight, old business discussion regarding the sign ordinance. So for the discussion on the 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 sign ordinance, uh, staff was looking at how many people are going to be here. And um, I guess unless you have anything to bring up directly today, we can just maybe continue that for next month for discussion. Okay. And keep reading it, read it over again, and <laughs> let it digest. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, and then uh, lastly, item nine, new business, none. Uh, with that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Could you hold on one second, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I get just a, a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye.